page for the whole rest of the story. Before I do that, I do want to tell you about a little bit about what you're doing when you're in your uh, offering, because it's going to the children that I work with in Africa. These children that we're giving clothes to are orphans, and I and I'm going to bring a video one night so you can see them and and how they look and what they're living like. They do not have moms and dads, and there's thousands and thousands of them in a camp where we, where my husband and I go, and we bring Bibles and Bible lessons to the boys and girls and moms and dads. But because we see these children with so few things, and many, especially the orphans, have one clothes, piece of clothes. They have a shirt and a pants or a dress, and that's it. And so our hearts have been heavy for them when we see them. And this Christmas, what we did is people donated, and we bought goats for the six zones, and we put a goat, gave a goat to every zone, and then the children that are coming to the Bible clubs came and they made a Christmas dinner for them. And these children in the camps, they get this to eat. Every day they have the same thing, beans and posha. Posha is ground up, cooked uh, corn. That's what they eat every day. Most of the boys and girls haven't had any meat for four years. So <coughs> we ask people if they help us and give money to buy goats. They love goats. Like we like beef or chicken, they love goat. And so then I'm going to show you a picture of <coughs> many of these children lining up and they're all orphans. <coughs> I'm swallowing wrong. <coughs> and they come through the line with a plate and they get goat and posha and beans and rice. They haven't had rice for a long time either. So they had this wonderful Christmas dinner. And then the next picture that they sent us the video, the children were all dancing and praising God for their good meal. <laughs> now we don't even think about that because we have whatever we want to eat whenever we want to eat it. But there are lots of children in our world that don't have that. So what we're gonna do, I, they call it a big, it's a big bundle and they call it a bale. And you can go in Africa and buy a bale of clothes, which is a big bundle, and then take it out to the camp, and we'll give clothes to as many orphans as we can. Okay, so that's what you're doing. That's what your money's going to go for. And then after they pass the clothes out, then I will try to bring pictures back so you can see the children wearing and getting their new clothes. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you that you have these stories to encourage us, but to teach us. And Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will speak through me and help to these children to understand the power in your word and what you've done for us. In my name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm going to start tonight by telling you a story about a man and a woman. And this story is right from God's Word. It's from 1 Samuel, and it starts in verse, I believe it's verse 4, 5, chapters 4, 5, 6, 7. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. There was a man whose name was Elkanah, and he had a wife, and her name was Hannah. And he loved his wife very, very much. And the one thing they wanted more than anything else in the world was to have a baby. But it didn't happen. No matter how hard they tried, Hannah, Hannah and Elkanah could not have a baby. It just didn't work. And Hannah was very, very sad. All she wanted in life was to have a baby. And she prayed for that. So every year, Hannah and Elkanah and many, many of their relatives would go to Shiloh, where the temple was. And there they would bring an offering. And the way they brought offerings were they would bring a perfect lamb or a, a perfect sacrifice, a bull or a goat, something perfect. And they would give that animal as a sacrifice for, to the Lord to tell the Lord they loved them and they were sorry for their sins. And they did this like three times a year. And every time they went, they would go to the temple and they would bring this, this animal and the animal would be sacrificed to God. Well, there were two men 
There was a man that was the head, the head priest of all of the church. He's like the head pastor. They were priests. And his name was Eli. And Eli was a good man. He was a good priest. And he loved God very much. But he had two sons that were supposed to be the next priest in line. And their names were Hophni and Phinehas. But Hophni and Phinehas were not such good men. The Bible said that they would take the offerings that the people brought. And God said, this is an offering for me. And they were to put it on the altar. But they would take the offering and take, if it, was a good, if it looked like a good a lamb or, or goat, they would take it for themselves instead of giving it to God made God very angry because they were being blasphemous to God, rude to God. These were not good boys. Well, these two boys were supposed to be next in line to be the priests, but God was not happy with them. Now back to Hannah and Elkanah. Okay, well, they went to the, this year, they went to the city of Shiloh to put their offering in front of the Lord and tell the Lord they were sorry for their sins and they loved him very much. And while they were there, they were all having lots of fun, lots of family, like a Christmas celebration. Everybody's all together laughing and celebrating after they'd gone to the temple. But Hannah was not enjoying herself, and she was not happy because the other women were all around with their children running and having fun, and she was barren, which means she had no children. So she wasn't happy. She was very sad. And so during the evening, when Elkanah and everyone was busy, Hannah slipped away and she went to the temple, to the church. And she went up to where the altar was. And the Bible says that she knelt down at the altar and she began to pray. She prayed and she asked God for a child. But the Bible says she was so sad and feeling so hopeless and so tormented inside of her that she was just begging God. And I'm sure she was like, Lord, please, please. And she was moving her mouth with no words coming out because she was praying silently for God to hear her. And her mouth was going and she was moving on. And all of a sudden, Eli, the priest, came out and saw her. And he said to her, Woman, are you drunk? How dare you come into God's house drunk? And she said, I'm not drunk. She said, inside I am hopeless and I am suffering because I'm begging God to hear me. And the priest looked at her and she said, I have been petitioning or begging God. Hear my prayer, Lord. Please give me a child. If you give me a child, God, I pray you that I will give him back to you and he can live in your home in your home in the temple and grow to know and serve you I promise you God I'll give him back if you give me a child the priest didn't know what she asked for but Eli said to her go home may God grant you the prayer that you've been asking for and so Hannah Malkana and all their family started home. And they lived there and did their normal life. And it was time for them to all, a year later now, it's one year later, it's time to go back to the temple and bring the sacrifice. Ham didn't go. Why do you think that was? Because she um, was sad that she didn't have like, a kid. Okay, what do you think? She's going into labor. She was pregnant. She was going to have a baby. God had answered her prayer. And so, Akana went with his family and Hannah stayed home. Hannah had made a promise, didn't she? What was her promise? That she would have the baby. And then what? That she would give the baby back to God. That she would give the baby back to God. And so, <clears throat> she remembered her promise. And she did have that baby. And she took care of that baby, and she loved that baby, and she named him Samuel. You know what Samuel means? What? Um, it 
It means asked of God. Do you think that was a good name for him? Asked of God. Because what had she done? She what? She asked who? God. God to give her a baby. Did he answer her prayer? Yes. yes. So she named the baby Samuel. Mm -hmm. Now, she took care of Samuel until he was, we don't know for sure, but he was maybe four, five years old. He wasn't very old. No, six. No, we don't know for sure his age. The Bible doesn't tell us. But she brought him back to Eli. The next time they went, and she brought him to the temple of Eli. And she said, do you remember me? And Eli looked at her, and she said, I'm the woman that was here asking God to hear my prayer. And you told me to go home, and that God would hear. And you know what? He did. And I asked God for this child, but I told the Lord that if he gave me a child, I would give him back, and that he could be raised in the temple, and that he could be a servant of the Lord. She said, so I'm bringing Samuel back here, and Eli, you are in charge of him. Raise him up, and make him the next prophet or priest to follow God's commands. Now, Eli had two sons, remember? Yeah. Hophni and Phinehas, were they good men? No. no, no, no. God saw that, so God decided he'd intervene and he'd make his own new, next prophet or priest. He wasn't going to choose Hophni and Phineas. And so Samuel lived at the temp in the temple or the uh, tabernacle with Eli. He had jobs. We don't know for sure. We know he helped light can like the lights, which were like candles. He would light those, help with that. He probably did chores. And when Eli needed something, he probably ran and did it. He lived there all the time he was growing up. And he helped Eli. And he was obedient. And he grew in the Lord. And he studied the Bible, uh, the Torah, they call it. And he became a good man that loved God very much. Well, when he was about... 11 or 12 years old, he'd grown quite a bit, and now he was much older. And <clears throat> the Bible says that every year, Hannah would come with her husband back to Shiloh. Do you think it was easy for a mother to give up her baby, oh. her little boy? Yeah. I don't think so, but she would promised God, so she kept her promise. And every year when she came back to Shiloh, she would go to where Eli and Samuel lived in the temple or the church, and she would bring a new coat for him and see him. And I'm sure she loved him very much and was so proud of what he was becoming as a young man. God didn't forget Hannah. She had three more sons and two daughters. So she had many children after Samuel. Well, one night, Samuel was in his bed sleeping. <clears throat> and Eli, we don't know where he was. He might have been in bed. He might have been in the other room. But he was sleeping there, and all of a sudden, he heard a voice. Samuel. He looked, and he thought, what? And he thought, oh, Eli must need me. So he got up, and he went to Eli. And he said, here I am, Eli. What did you want? Eli said, I didn't call you, Samuel. Go back to bed. So and Samuel went back to bed. He laid there. He's probably close to falling asleep, and he heard Samuel. Got, got up, and he went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, Eli. What do you need? What do you want? Eli said, I didn't call you, Samuel. Go back to bed. Samuel went back to bed. He's laying there, and he heard Samuel. Samuel. This had to be Eli. He got up and he went, he said, Eli, here I am. What do you want? Three times you called me. And then Eli thought, it's not me. It must be God. He's chosen Samuel. He said, Samuel, next time you hear that voice, you say, here I am, Lord. And, and then he says, um, what, what do you need? So Samuel went back to his room and he waited. And he heard the voice again, Samuel. And he said, Lord, here I am. What do you need? And the Lord said, Samuel, Hophni and Phineas 
Eli's sons are not going to be the next priests. They are wicked and men, and men that do not love me. He said, you are going to be the next priest. So I want you to keep growing in your faith because I have plans for you, Samuel. Special plans for your life. Samuel went to bed that night and he slept thinking that the very God in heaven spoke to him of all people. Usually God did speak in those days, but it was always to the priest. But God was speaking to Samuel because Samuel was going to be the next priest. The next morning when Samuel got up, he went down to be with Eli to have breakfast or whatever. And when he was there, Eli said, what would the Lord want last night, Samuel? And Samuel didn't want to tell him because he thought Eli would be so angry because those were his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And that's what Samuel, uh, Eli would think would be the next priest. And he said, Samuel, if you don't tell me what God wanted, he said, I'm, you're going to be in big trouble. He said, you need to tell me everything God said to you. Everything, Samuel, don't hold anything back. And Samuel told Eli exactly what God had said, that Hophni and Phinehas were not going to be priests, but Samuel was going to be the next priest. And you know what Eli said? He said, it is the Lord. Let him do what pleaseth him. The Lord knows. I don't like it, but this is what the Lord wants. So let him do what's best. And so <clears throat> Eli knew that Samuel would be the next priest and, no, and not his sons. And the story goes on to tell that <clears throat> Eli's two sons, Hophni, Hophni and Phinehas, went off to war. And they were fighting the Philistines, the same people that you're going to hear about later with only a boy named David. But they were fighting the Philistines, their enemies, and they had the Ark of the Covenant, which was a really important piece to have at the church. It had special things that, like the Ten Commandments and things, it was really important. And they had that bringing into battle because they brought the ark with them to give them power because God was part of that. God had created that. God's law was in there and they knew there'd be power from God for the The ark was taken and Hophni and Phinehas had been killed. And then the Bible says that Eli, he probably, had a stroke, we don't know, but he fell backwards in his chair and he died. And from that time on, Samuel was the one that was going to be, and the people, the Bible says the people respected Samuel and they waited for him to become the next high priest and lead the people. Now we're going to find out a lot more stories about these men that we've been, about Samuel, especially now, Samuel's going to go forward in our next story, and we're going to find out how he's connected to David. Now, I know a lot of you know the stories of David, but there's always new things to learn in every Bible story when we talk about David. So let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, and thank you for Samuel. Thank you that you took a young man, and you've chosen this small child who grew to be a boy and a girl that loved you. And I pray for that a boy who loved you. And I pray that these boys and girls will know that you have plans for them, that you love them, and that just like Samuel, you have a purpose for their life. And I just pray, Lord, that you'll uh, put your hand on them, protect them, and bring us all back safely next week. In thy name we pray. Amen.